In 2018, I made the change from being a commentary channel and decided that I want to be this rare thing called happy. <laughs> Instead of preying on cringe inducing assholes like I was any f better in order to make content, I jumped from one oversaturated YouTube genre into the next and started making video essays on storytelling within video games. Plus, you know, that one video that isn't about a video game that happened to blow up and I contemplate deleting it every fucking day. What I've discovered in this time is when it comes to story writing in the medium of video games, there are two ways that you can lay out your narrative. A linear narrative where all the events of the game happen in an already determined order and can be changed and non-linear where the events of the game can happen in a varying order and also have the benefit of ending on a different note throughout your various playthroughs. Where linear storytelling is more akin to admiring an already complete piece of artwork, non-linear stories like to give you a clean canvas and request that you paint something with varying outcomes on what the final piece is going to look like. And this is where a small indie game titled Road 96 comes into play. Road 96 is a story rich adventure game created by Digix Art a French studio comprised of some of the greatest oh, minds in the sense. gaming industry, ah! making games full of innovations and writing stories overflowing with creativity. And knowing what the gaming industry is like, this is probably the reason on why you've never fucking heard of them. Now, I'm not here to tell you that because, yeah, that'd be completely untrue. If a story isn't linear, then by default, it is non-linear. But hear me out. What makes Road 96 so special isn't the fact that it is non-linear. It's how the game innovates on how non-linear stories are traditionally told. In today's video, I want to take a deeper look at Road 96 to discuss everything from its world, your journey, the people you meet along the way, and how Road 96 single-handedly reinvented storytelling in video games. It's been a while, and let me just say, it's good to be back. I've always understood the importance of world building, but I've never felt like it was always, you know, necessary. For me, if I love the characters of a story and empathize with their mission, I've always found myself hooked, no matter how shallow the world could possibly be. But Road 96 might be the first game where, without the world it takes place in, the whole game just doesn't work. Road 96 takes place in the fictional country of Petria and focuses on the political divide that the people are struggling with and details the antics of the two parties up for election. You have Tyrek, a corrupt candidate fueling his campaign through the selling of Petria's finite oil deposits, with the name Tyrek clearly being a play on the word tyrant and okay, <laughs> I don't want to be mean but I'm pretty sure the blatant propaganda and the enslavement of children wouldn't have gone over people's heads, Digix Art, but uh, Suddenly sure went over yours. <laughs> okay, okay, come on now. This is this is a nice video. Let's just keep going. And then there's Flores, a political candidate whose only promise is change, but barely details what that change is supposed to be. For the player, this is just thinly paved setup for there to be political discourse throughout the game, but it's only once you start adventuring through the lands of Petria that you start to see how important and dangerous this election really is. Buildings are completely covered in propaganda posters, illustrating the election overshadowing everything else and people day-to-day -day lives. Missing posters lay about showing just how many people are fleeing Petria in the fear of the world to come. Flores billboards damaged and destroyed illustrate imagery of all those that have given up on the possibility of change and cops paid off by Tyrak to beat Flores protesters flood the streets. And no matter how horrendous Tyrak's actions are, his finely tuned propaganda manipulates Petria into thinking that this is all for the greater good. The game even makes it that the news manipulates your own story. 
story. Every few days after the player makes decisions, the news will report your actions as that of a terrorist or the action of someone who hates the country. And that includes situations where you try to save lives. Your actions are always twisted to seem like those of a person who wants to harm Petria. Speaking of Petria, while playing I always saw the desert environment as a representation of the dangerous journey to the border. But looking into it I found out that the entire country of Petria is just, well, dying. When looking at the world map in game, I assumed the country went for miles below this point. When you start here, the world is dead and dry. But when you head to the Road 96 website and look at the official map for Petria, that is it. There is hardly any of Petria that you don't explore in the game. The entire country is a dying husk of its former self, indicated by unkept buildings and faint memories of those that came before. Road 96 builds itself from the ground up as a world on the brink of collapse, with the election being the last hope for the people. Tyrak promises the same while spinning tales of terrorists in order to keep the people in line, and while Floris does promise to make change, these promises fall on the deafened ears of those who refuse to listen due to the propaganda. But what really drives home the sense of helplessness isn't the signs or the history long forgotten, it's the people of Petria living amongst the ruins that truly make you realize the decay. Characters you interact with through Road 96 encapsulate the circumstances the citizens of Petra find themselves in, while also slowly letting the player in on their dark pasts, but only if the player tries to pursue it. You have Sonia Sanchez, a news reporter working under Tyrak, Stan and Mitch, two brothers who plunder Petria for its money, Alex, a teen with an abundance of tech knowledge, Fanny, a cop patrolling the border, John, a trucker working along the highways, Zoe, a teen hoping to cross the border and leave Petria, and then there's Jared, a speculated serial killer who resembles that of a tub of melted ice cream. Each character has their own story to tell, and on repeat playthroughs you can bump into the characters in different scenarios and slowly grasp their full backstory. And what you'll realise slowly is that all of these characters are related, not by blood, but due to an event that changed the course of history for Petria. Wait, hold on, I'm just realising that that's a lie. I I don't know why I wrote that in the script. Stan, Mitch, and Sonia are their siblings. <laughs> why the fuck did I write? Road 96 takes place in, you, and you guys, you're not gonna believe this, uh, 1996. But it's what happened in the year of 86 that sets up the rest of the world. In 1986, a terrorist group calling themselves the Brigades tried to assassinate Tyrak by blowing up a mountain, with the avalanche intended to kill Tyrak failing to do so and killing many innocent people in the process. This event is what puts all of our characters on the same path. Path, or should I say, the same road. Now, there is a lot of context for this event that I'm leaving out. This is how the event is presented to you at the start of the game. And I'd just like to point out that the people informing you of this are the same people who work under Tyrak. So there is probably more to this event that you can find out by going and playing the game. Road 96, as of uh, recording, is up on Xbox Game Pass. Uh, go check it out. It's on PC as well. This video isn't a breakdown that spoils the entire story, but from here I will be talking about characters that are better explored playing the game, but if you don't mind minor spoilers, uh, let's continue. What makes all of these characters so special isn't their relation to each other, but how all of them were affected by the bite of 87. The Tragedy of 86 Sonia was a reporter at Tyrak's speech and was caught at the bottom of the mountain when the explosives went off. She had to watch as a young girl screaming for help was crushed by the falling debris. Sonia blames herself for not saving this young girl and tries to redeem herself by reporting the antics of this terrorist group. It's why she runs Tyrak's propaganda. If the brigades are anti-Tyrak, then Tyrak must be the good guy. A lot of the lies Sonia throws around are depicted as cowardly and manipulative, but it's only once you know why she is lying that you can empathize with her. She is a victim of the propaganda as well, and is so scared that the brigades could do another 86 that she will say anything to make sure that they never get a footing. Stan and Mitch are apolitical, which simply means that they stay away from politics as best as they can, and in doing so, they have thrown themselves into a life of crime. Not having a political opinion about the tragedy of 86, a 
alienates them from the masses and results in the only people they have being each other. They're still criminals, but they never kill people. It's clear that these characters are just in it for the money, which honestly makes them the most trusting people in the game because they have no agenda. And I'll be real with you, bumping into Stan and Mitch in this game is, is, it's pretty fucking fun. Uh, their segments are probably the most fun you'll have in the game. Alex is the child of two brigades that were killed by the debris back in 86. His adoptive mother Fanny, which we brought up earlier, has only recently told him the truth of who his parents are, and now he seeks out information on who his parents were as people. It's through Alex that we get to see more of the brigades, and their stance on how the assassination attempt in 86 really went down. While bringing light to the manipulation of Tyrak on what really happened, the game through Alex doesn't outright say that the brigades are 100% the good guys. Despite the brigades being depicted as justice in the game, the brigades do manipulate Alex into aiding them by holding information about his parents above his head, showing how the brigades, whilst originally good guys, have seen what the power of manipulation can bring to a cause and have slowly started to sink down to the level of Tyrak. As for Fanny, her story lines up pretty closely with Alex's, but tries to illustrate a person on the other side of this political war. Fanny uses her job as a highway patrol officer as a means to stay in contact with Alex, as she, you know, loves and cares for him. The only catch here being that the cops are paid off by Tyrak, and for her to keep her job where she can stay in contact with Alex over the radio, she is forced into silencing those who go against Tyrak, including the young rebellious teens trying to escape the country. And that is where Zoe comes in. Zoe is the closest thing to the player's goals manifested into a presentable character. All Zoe wants is to escape the country, However, on her journey, she starts figuring out where all of these teenagers leaving the country end up. In a desperate attempt to keep good relations with neighboring countries, Tyrak imprisons all the teenagers crossing the border out of Petria, enslaving them and even killing them to ensure his electoral victory, and ensuring that nothing like 86 happens again. Zoe represents the public's turn to rebellion if the news of what Tyrak was ever doing leaked. Zoe is representative of what the world can be like, but only if Tyrak Tyrak is taken down. John, while disguised as a trucker, is one of the two leaders of the brigades and gives a deeper insight on the balancing game of power within the brigades. You have John and Robert as the two leaders of the brigades. Whilst John represents the cause's honest and down-to-earth intentions, Robert illustrates the slow turn of the cause and demonstrates the fine line that can brand them as terrorists. And then we have, in my opinion, the best character in the entire game, Jared. Jared has no alignment of any kind because Jared represents the people affected by all sides. But how? The young girl that Sonya failed to save in 86 was Jared's daughter. Jared's daughter was not only left to die by Sonia, but was recruited into the brigades by Robert. After 10 years of struggling to cope with the death of his daughter, Jared wants revenge on everyone. Jared kills people who he suspects of being brigades while plotting to assassinate Sonia for standing idly by and turning his daughter into a news headline. One of the first times you bump into Jared, he asks you if you like dinosaurs, with articles about them filling his taxi. And it's only later that you find out that his daughter loved dinosaurs. Jared tries to see the innocence in your life by making this comparison, but when you tell him that you hold any standing with Tyrak or the brigades, he will turn on you instantly. He isn't mad at you, he is mad that someone just as innocent as his daughter has chosen a side. You are his daughter happening again. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, what about me? Who am I? I'm playing this game, who is my character? And that's the thing. You are not important, and that's the point. And would you look at that? It looks like we've made it to our destination. So what does the title of this video even mean? How did Road 96 reinvent storytelling? As you play through Road 96, your playable character slowly makes their way to the border. This journey is procedurally generated and interactions with characters can happen in a variety of ways. Once you make it to the border, you'll be given a percentage of how much of the character's stories you unfolded due to you meeting them. Once you beat the game, you can play the game over and over and over again, trying different ways in order to talk to these characters, so you can unlock more of their story. 
Or at least, that's what I thought this was going to be. I thought that once you made it to the border, that's it. I beat the game. That was my mission, right? And yeah, it is. But you are not the only one trying to make it to the border. Once you make it to the border, Sonya will report on one of the highlights of your journey, twisting it to make you seem like a monster when you know that isn't the case. And then this happens. As you know, the Sonya Show is very concerned about our youth who continue to mysteriously disappear. Let's view today's missing teen report. Remember, if you have any information, please call the Sonia Hotline. And that has been the Sonia Show. This blew my mind. You aren't playing as a teenager heading to the border. You are playing as all the people heading to the border. Road 96 is a game about the collapse of society, where people are helpless to the coming change and there is nothing that they can do about it. You are not important, and that's the point. To write a story about one person bringing peace to Petria would be idiotic. A faceless, nameless nobody can't bring the change Petria needs. All you can do is flee. But it's the actions of the many that can bring people together. In a game about how the people of Petria are frightened, the game does not make you play the hero. It allows you to play as the people more than one. Road 96 is a game specifically about people feeling like they don't have a voice. Over your singular playthroughs as one person, your actions mean nothing. It's only once you've played as the many that you see that your voices really do matter. Road 96 reinvents storytelling by making you play the nobodies. You aren't the leader of the rebellion, you aren't the edgy assassin, and you aren't the cop looking for your child. You're the nobodies. And yet somehow, you all made a difference. In a game about the people, Road 96 makes sure to put you in the shoes of the people. You play as Petria. You don't have to be important to do important things. All you have to do is stick together. An accumulation of your actions across the game influence how the game ends. But I'm not here to talk about the endings, because it's never really been about the destination. It's always been about the journey. The journey of the many along Road 96. If you're still with me, I'd like to ask you all a big favor. Please, leave a comment. I've noticed a lot lately that my videos seem to get recommended a lot more when people have something to say, and in a game about people having a say and having their voices heard, it seems all the more poetic. And I do love hearing what you guys have to say. I love replying and having little debates, it's quite nice. And I'm honestly still blown away that there are 3,000 of you subscribed to me. Probably even more at this point, that's just insane to me. Some of you really go the extra mile for me, and yes, that includes the little shit who wouldn't stop saying the word eyelids for some fucking reason over an entire year, never missing a day, to the point that I had to make a promise that if he stopped, I'd put him in this video. Are you happy now? I said, are you fucking happy? <laughs>